everybody and welcome to this lovely hotel in Schaumburg, Illinois. <laughs> Andrew and I are about, I guess, 30 to 45 minutes outside of Chicago for Adepticon. This is Andrew's like yearly big hobby thing. Um, if you don't already know, Andrew loves painting, both canvas painting and also like miniature painting for like Warhammer, historical gaming, like stuff like that. And there's a big painting competition and uh, like gaming convention here in Schaumburg um, for his hobby. So we come to this every year in March, which is where we are right now. He's already left for the day. He's at the convention. I like to do a mixture of like going to the convention and then doing things on my own and using it as an excuse to have some fun. So today that is what we are doing. I really wanted to have a thrifting vintage day hopping around. So I think it's going to be a day filled with thrift store, um, shopping, uh, we're definitely going to be going to dinner later on in Chicago. I'll probably go to a coffee shop and hang out with a book or do some knitting. Yes, you heard me right. I said knitting. I cast on the Helen Stewart Mystery Knit Along, the 24 Birds Cal. Don't ask me why I did this. Uh, have I finished knitting anything I've cast on in the past several years? No, but we're not going to talk about that. I've literally just picked up this random skein of yarn. I don't even know. I didn't even pick out all four colors. I just like it calls for four different skeins of yarn. I just randomly picked up one partially used skein of yarn in my craft room before we left and I cast it on on the plane. And yeah, it's happening. You know, what? you just got to enjoy your hobbies. I feel even if it's not going to lead to a finished project. Uh, who cares? It'll just be fun to knit along the way. Plus, I really love Helen Stewart's patterns. I've knit a number of her patterns over the years. So yeah, I cast that on. So I would love to go to a coffee shop later and just like work on Clue One, which was released a couple days ago. So that's like kind of the plan for today. Just like a loose, let's hang out and do some fun stuff uh, in Schaumburg and Chicago. <laughs> Let's go. In hindsight, I really wish I had the foresight to have rented a car because the amount of money we have spent on Ubers since being here is a little bit crazy. Like I said, we're in the suburbs and not like in Chicago proper, but because we're like getting toward the end of the trip now, um, we've been here for a couple days now. I just don't see the point in doing it. So I guess, you know, I'm just gonna have to eat that Uber cost. So I think the first port of call for me today is gonna be to go to this thrift store called Savers, which I know Savers is a chain, but they don't have them in like New York uh, City or anything like that. So I'm gonna go to Savers. I think there's two even that I'll go to. So let's go do that. I wanna pick up some coffee for sure along the way, maybe like a croissant or something like that if I can find it for breakfast. And by the way, a little OOTD outfit of the day. I'm wearing these pants I got from TJ Maxx, my Just Patterns Alec rib top, one of my favorites, and my recently finished Isla trench coat. Isn't it gorgeous? I love it. I finished it. It's beautiful. It's been keeping me so warm in like 20 and 30 degree weather in Chicago. This fabric is so dense. It was worth all seven needles it took um, to make it because it just dulled fabric so quickly. But because the fabric is so dense, it's really, really warm despite being lined with only like a Bember gray on and not something light, like warmer uh, textured. So yeah, it's really, really warm and it's been amazing to have in Chicago. So this is actually going to turn into, I think like, a coat that will be suitable for deep winter even in New York but yeah I really love it again this is the named clothing Isla trench coat I feel like it has so many fantastic details the drafting was really good on it everything just came together really smoothly um, and yeah I love the finished result modifications that I made I squared off it's hard to tell because it's black, I know, but I squared off the cape right here. It's rounded in the design because I wanted it to be more like my inspo. I lengthened it, obviously. Um, what else? Oh, I had a, I sewed it with a like, like scant seam allowance in the arms just to give me more room for layering underneath it. It is a quite fitted pattern in the arms. I sized up two and a half sizes to give it a little bit more of like an oversized 
feel to it and to like comfortably be able to get sweaters and blazers on underneath it and I think that was perfect so yeah I really really love it could not recommend it more highly the only thing that really tripped me up about the pattern were the welt pocket instructions i found the illustrations and instructions for these to be a little bit confusing but some angelic soul i will leave the video linked down below she put on a full length youtube video of her doing the welt pockets for the isla trench coat and that video was just amazing i loved sewing along with that video because she was herself is actually really funny and just like nice to listen to. It was like a, the inner monologue that she had like while she was sewing the pockets was kind of like what I go through in my own head uh, while I sew. But anyway, yeah, so the bot pockets were a cinch when I found that video. So I just followed along with that. Um, but yeah, this is the final coat. I think it turned out beautifully. Um, the only thing I want to do to it is I need to add buttons still to the front. I didn't have a chance to do that before we left for Chicago. And then I also want to add, it's not part of the pattern, but you see like these sleeve straps that are right here. I want to add, I guess like, I don't know if it's called epaulets on jackets that are not military jackets, but I want to add, you know, like this equivalent, like right here up on top of the shoulder, which I think will look really nice. So. That's my finished Isla trench coat. Definitely put this in your queue if you're thinking about making a trench coat. It is a wonderful, wonderful pattern. Even if you like make it with just like traditional trench coat fabrics like cotton twills or garbadines and stuff like that. Yeah, I think it's amazing. So, all right, let's go. Okay, so. I started off by going to, and I'm going to butcher the name, I'm sorry, Tous Les Jours, <laughs> to get a coffee and a croissant. Um, but it was really full in there, so I couldn't stay in there and eat. Now I'm walking over to the Savers with my coffee to start the day of thrifting. at the first uh, stop which was savers I spent no lie four hours in there but I'm somebody who likes to comb I like to dig I like to look for the hidden gems and finds I'll be doing a little haul with you um, at the end of the video but yeah I'm really excited I found some really cool stuff now I'm waiting for an uber to take me to another savers which is like 15 to 20 minutes away from here I miss thrifting so much I used to thrift all the time when I lived in Tennessee but I just don't do it very much in New York because it's quite expensive to do in New York so yeah really excited I'm having a lot of fun and finding some really good wardrobe pieces along the way okay I'm back in the room as you can see with a very large bag of thrift finds from savers so I didn't explain or show a whole lot while I was in there because I was like eyes on the prize. These stores were enormous compared to thrift stores that I've been to um, recently. And I really just wanted to zone out and have fun. So yeah, I found a lot of really cool and exciting things. I will say being a sewer definitely has its advantages when you're thrifting. You can just tell good material right away and I would almost like test myself like by going quickly and then stopping when I could feel something that was nice I would check it and then like sure enough it would be 100% silk or something like that so yeah being a sewist I think definitely it gives you advantages when you're thrifting for looking for quality um, not just materials but also like quality construction as well so yeah when I'm thrifting I have like a few like personal rules um I don't like very very rarely unless it's something that I just like really really love I don't tend to thrift anything that is fast fashion that's not to say that I don't think fast fashion belongs in thrift stores like I'm glad it's there so that at least it's not going to landfill and it could have more use but a lot of times fast fashion is just like not very good quality and not made well 
Um, so I don't tend to thrift fast fashion, uh, especially not Shein. Even if it's like the cutest thing ever, I will not purchase something from Shein. And I hope, I really hope you guys are not buying from Shein. This is like, I'm not very preachy on this channel, um, not often, but please don't buy Shein. It's horrible for the environment. They rip off artists constantly. And yeah, there's just a whole, I don't, well, get off my soapbox, but no, no Shein ever. And then the last thing is that I don't tend to buy things that are too far away from my personal size and definitely not plus size. I feel like plus size people t already have enough trouble finding cute clothes compared to like straight size people. So I'm not going to take anything um, that a plus size person could use, which is definitely different from when I was younger. I'd say that's something that I learned as I got older. I used to buy plus size clothing and then like harvest it for the fabric to use to like recycle or upcycle in some way. But I feel like I've learned a lot since those days and like we're talking like grade school, high school, um, etc. I've learned a lot since then about, um, yeah, like why that maybe isn't like the best thing to do. So thank you to people in the online community who educate me on topics like that. Um, but yeah, those are like my personal rules. But anyway, let's get into the thrifting haul. All right, we're gonna start with one of my, probably one of my favorite pieces that I even found in no particular order. I'm just going through what I found and it's this belt. I need belts. Uh, a lot of mine I've not replaced in years like I've had them again since high school even I just don't really replace them and I use them over and over and over and a lot of them are just not in good shape anymore and I found this one it's an actual leather belt with this super cool closure on the front I just think this is so neat so I really like that another one I found was this one right here this is a brown leather woven belt that has this kind of brass antique brass buckle on it whenever i was looking for belts today i definitely only want to go for ones that are actual leather so that they'll last i was trying to put it on like i'm going to show you but it's i'm not in a position to really show you but anyway you get the idea a braided leather belt this one i think will be really good for like layering on top of dresses i need more like styling pieces in my wardrobe so i think that's what this will be good for and then a plain black oh wait no this one's brown suede yeah brown suede belt that has this that's the cool tip on the end and then the buckle I found this really cute skirt it's navy I haven't tried anything on by the way that is a downside of savers they don't have fitting rooms so I couldn't try anything on to make sure it would fit which is kind of a gamble I do think they actually do have a return policy though now that I'm probably gonna go back yeah you can bring it back within 14 days of purchase so technically if you live near a savers you're probably fine because you can try it on in the comfort of your own home as long as the tags are on and return it but um yeah so I found this navy skirt which I thought was really cute yeah this would be good for summer this was a real find, one of my favorites, this really gorgeous, it's hard to tell really on camera, but it's like a brownish but almost purple jacket, and it's so beautiful, it just, I think, will again be a really great layering piece. Can you see me? No. <laughs> but yeah, this is really gorgeous jacket that's like a brown purple it's a hundred percent silk this was a real find it's got shoulder pads to give it some structure on the top and it's like a midi length jacket so that's really cute it's got these matching buttons right here on the sleeves from patrick collection next up this shirt I know came from TJ Maxx, but I don't care because I've seen it before and I've even asked people out in the wild where they've gotten this exact shirt and I've never seen one myself at TJ Maxx. So I was very excited to find this. This is a Monet t-shirt that I just think will be really cute. I'm not really one for graphic tees normally, but sometimes certain ones speak to me and I've just loved this shirt ever since I saw it, so. I thought that was really cute. This is the Monet version, but I've seen ones that are like Van Gogh ones and stuff, so that was cool. Next up, I found this uh, new with tags, actually, a tank top knit that's got a really cool neckline 
feature. This color is a color I've really kind of discovered in the past couple years. It's not one that I would use to gravitate toward, but then I made a top in this color and I wore that thing, still do, non-stop. So then I kind of realized I just really like and enjoy this color. So I kind of, yeah, look, keep an eye out for it now. So I found this one and then not only did I find that, but I found this long sleeve uh, Eileen Fisher crew neck. And so yeah, I love this because the top that I have that's in this color is a turtleneck, so I have that. And then I have like a half button up top, like a three quarter button up top. And so this will be a nice addition to the colors like this in my collection because I definitely will wear that. One more belt. This one is a black leather one. It's kind of similar vibes to the brown suede tip right there but this one has these like little gold ring details on the front some of these i got to wear like on my high waist with dresses as a styling thing for dresses and then other ones i got in larger sizes to be able to wear like lower around my hips with uh pants and jeans and stuff like that next up i got this what's this nordstrom signature cotton blue button-up shirt but it's like a uh, sleeveless shirt so I feel like that will be perfect for summer this one's a bit of a wild card for me but I just really liked it I don't know that I could really wear this on its own so I feel like I need to figure out a way to layer this so maybe this on top of like a white button-up shirt maybe or something I don't know I'll have to figure it out but I just really liked the checkerboard and then like the smaller uh, rectangles in the middle. I just thought the pattern was really cute. I've been looking for ways to incorporate more patterns into my wardrobe because I just wear the same things, solids, stripes, and then like some florals, but it really depends on the floral. So I've been looking for more pieces like this that have interesting patterns to break up my outfits a little bit more. Like even today I'm wearing this like solid heathered gray shirt and black pants, you know, like, I mean, I like what I like. So it's not that I'm saying there's anything wrong with my style or anything, but I've just been trying to keep a lookout for more statement pieces to incorporate with these items that I already like because I feel like it elevates the whole look just like that uh, burgundy velvet blazer that I got in the last video that I uploaded I wore that with um, some white Persephone pants and what top was it I don't know but it was like a plain top is like maybe a black and white striped top which is something that's very me and the white Persephone is very me but the red blazer just really elevated the whole thing to another level like if I paired a cool belt with that outfit it would have just probably been the ultimate so I'm looking for more statement types of pieces to incorporate into my wardrobe and I thought this was super fun also it's very soft very soft I don't know if I looked at the fiber content of this one rayon it's mostly rayon with polyester and nylon so I really like it it's just like navy and taupe color In that same vein of interesting patterns, <laughs> I found this top by 90 Petites. This one is definitely like a true vintage, vintage for the 90s. It's so weird to think of the 90s as vintage, but yeah, I guess that's, you know, over 20 years ago now. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I found this, which sort of is like animal print-esque. I was very much on the lookout for anything that's got this like if you can see this like stretchy crinkle texture to it like plisse because I feel like it's very 90s y2k aesthetic and incorporating that texture into an outfit again just kind of gives it a little something fun and some interest and I liked the neutral color so even though the print is a little bit wacky for me the color makes it a little more integratable if that's a word into my wardrobe so I feel like this will pair really well with like black pants or white pants or red pants or I don't know something that's like more solid and this will be like the statement piece next up I found this knit top which will be a little bit oversized on me but I loved the color blocking and the stripes and colors mixture I think this is a really cool top I can't wait to wear that 
I mentioned to you guys, I think in a previous video that I really need more white t-shirts and my favorite white t-shirts are from Uniqlo, but the ones that I get have been sold out for months now, like since November, I want to say. We're getting, you know, middle of March and still no t-shirt restock in sight. Um, and white t-shirts, you know, you have to replace them somewhat regularly because they get like the makeup and stuff on them. So I keep an eye out when I see them. I did buy some white fabric from Mood to make my own t-shirt because I've made a t-shirt pattern um, by tracing my favorite t-shirt. So I have that. Um, and some white fabric, but I saw this one and I decided to go ahead and pick it up since it's in really good condition. So this is just like a Gap white t-shirt that will be nice to have. That same vein, I, you can never have enough basics, you know, I'm still me. But this is an Old Navy shirt, but the thing I really like about it um, is that it's like a lowish scoop. So I think this will look really flattering um, on me. I like the low scoop on it. And quite a fitted top so that will pair nicely in the wardrobe so this one was exciting and a little bit out of the norm for me this one again is another true vintage piece but when I felt it I was like oh that feels so nice and it lo and behold was a hundred percent silk the color though is very different for me I used to go for more bright colors like this but I just haven't in a long time I guess New York kind of made my wardrobe perhaps a little more neutral but I feel like while I do love my neutrals, and I always have, I feel myself getting pulled more to like experiment with color a little bit more or like punchy bits. Again, just trying to bring more of those statement pieces to mix in with my otherwise quite neutral wardrobe because I want to have some excitement and I really liked this top. So it's 100% silk. I thought, why not? Because how much was it? It was really inexpensive. $7. And could I make this myself? Yes, but you know, why not? This fun one, a cold water creek. Uh, let's see, what is this made out of? Did I even look? Yeah, 100% cotton. And it's a blue stripe and it has these embroidered, it's not like full on heavy embroidered. I don't know how they are into, yeah, I guess it is it is embroidered, but it's not like embroidery I've ever seen. It's not really raised up. But anyway, they're little birds. And I just think that this shirt was really cute. I, this one was the one I was kind of like on the fence about getting because I'm when I buy things from thrift stores, I don't want to just like consume mindlessly. But I didn't really have, I would say, ideas about how I could integrate this in my wardrobe. But again, because I'm looking for more of these statement types of tops, I felt like this one was really fun. And I think I'll just have to figure it out later. <laughs> Only a few items left to go. The next one is this skirt, which I'm sure is going to be a little bit too big for me, but I can take it in. Um, and it's a midi length skirt, which is not my usual preference. So I think what I'm going to end up doing, I couldn't resist. The reason I bought it is because I love the pleated fabric and I love this uh, kind of like suiting fabric that they've used. I think that this is like a nice contrast as like a more... I guess elevated fancy look that I could pair with something like this white tank to make it more casual and like some flats or something like that I think it would make a such a chic outfit in New York in the summertime I'll try it on and see what I think about the midi length but I have a feeling I'm gonna end up cutting this into a more mini length and then potentially adding something a bit more utilitarian vibes to it to just kind of give this nice contrast to something that's more business oriented I think as it is but something like buckles or like a leather strap or some sort of like ties or so, I don't know something to give it some interest I think it's a good base piece to work with as a very minimal upcycling project. This piece is definitely the closest thing I came to purchasing something like fast fashion. It's not a brand I recognize, but the fabric just doesn't feel like the best quality really. But what really sold me on it is the style of it. I don't know if you can tell, but it's just like a V on both sides. It has this slight little peplum detail, not like a long peplum, but then this like tie in the middle. It's a dress. It is a high low dress, which is very, uh, college for me so I don't know if I'll keep the high low or I'll cut it into like one length all the way around I'll try it on and see what I think but I really liked the top portion of the dress and so I feel like it will be a cute one for summer
Okay, only two more to go. This dress right here, very different for me, I'm sure you will think, but I loved the colors together. This like corally orangey red with this uh, like sky blue periwinkle color. I love these colors individually and I really liked them together. The only thing is, it's a, I'm gonna have to stand up to show you this, but it's quite long, it's maxi length. It's one that I would definitely want to belt to my body, like any of these belts I can see would be, would look fabulous with this dress to give me some shape at the waistline. The only thing I'm not crazy about are these sleeves. I'm not really big on puffy sleeves. It's not my thing. I'm not like cottage core was never really my thing. I experimented with a few pieces just to see, but it just never really went with my wardrobe. Um, so yeah, I'm not a big puffy sleeves girl. So what I'm thinking I will do is I'm going to take off the sleeves and turn it into a sleeveless dress or rework the like not the whole neckline because I don't mind this part but like turn it into something that's more like a spaghetti strap or uh, create some ties on the sleeveless dress or something I don't know something to change up the sleeve on it I'll definitely be removing the sleeves but TBD on how that manifests in the end regardless I still loved the colors of it in this really bold pattern I think like this dress with a cute like belt, it could be very boho chic, some sandals, a denim jacket, like the whole look I can really imagine coming together in my head. So really liked that. And then last but not least, I found this oh, camera is super blowing out, but I told you guys I was really into trying to find these plissé types of fabrics. This one I think will be another upcycling project. I don't love it as is it's kind of like a flowy top situation but it has this cute like chain detail right here i'm not exactly sure what i'm gonna do with this yet i'm not gonna wear it as is but i do think i'll recycle this into some sort of upcycling project i think that will be fun so that's it that's the haul i got a lot of amazing pieces I'm really excited about what I found. I only went to two stores and found all of these amazing goodies. Just looking at it here, let me show you. The color palette is so me. I love the colors in here. There's still stripes, plenty of solids, lots of neutrals, but then also lots of like bold, interesting things to add to my wardrobe, whether it's through color, whether it's through fabric texture, um, or like a cute print you know how I'm gonna fit any of this into my suitcase remains to be seen because Andrew and I shared a suitcase coming here because it was only gonna be a few days trip so we didn't really need two checked bags um, so yeah I don't know how I'm gonna fit this going back but that's a problem for future me anyway right now what time is it I 52 and Andrew uh, has one of his, Andrew entered two painting competitions this weekend, one of which is announced at 6.30. And I'm gonna see if any of his entries won in one of the competitions he entered, fingers crossed. Tonight we're gonna be going out for dinner in Chicago, like I mentioned, so yeah, I'm gonna get myself ready now and uh, head over to the convention center.